Amen, amen. It, but it's a privilege and it's an honor to be here this morning at the um, River of Love. It's always to be in fellowshipping um, with you guys. But after hearing the um, worship aspect of the service and uh, Pastor Mike touched on some things that I was going to talk about, amen, and then the um, testimony, well, I'm ready to go home, amen. <laughs> amen, it's been a... It's, it's, it's been good, but again, uh, it's, it's, it's a privilege, and it's an honor um, to be here. I'm constantly praying for you guys. Amen. I just want you to know that you're always um, in my prayers. Amen. Amen? God is a good God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And what I want to share with you um, this morning, uh, very briefly if I can, I want to talk about, in the 11th chapter of um, Matthew, and, 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 and it's good that we, the youth, can stay in, in for this service this morning. Amen. Amen. You notice what I say, it's good that we, the youth, we, the youth, can stay in the service this morning. Amen. Amen. But in uh, Matthew, the um, 11th chapter, and, and really from verse number 20 to verse number 30, uh, what Jesus is dealing with, uh, he's giving a promise for rest, a promise for um, rest. I sense that Jesus was realizing the circumstances of that particular day and time and realizing that uh, people just needed rest. They need to be rest from uh, th their weariness and things of that nature. And so when Jesus was talking about a promise for rest, and it, it haven't changed today. I, I still feel that in, in this hour, Jesus is saying there is a promise. My promise is for each of us for a rest for your soul. But there was two keys to receiving this rest um, from Jesus. And, and chapter number um, 28, Jesus says this. I'm going to read it from three different versions. I'm going to read it from the King James. I'm going to read it from the Amplified, then from the um, Chronological Light. Um, in the King James Version, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then from the Amplified Version, he said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul. The chronological life, he said, come unto me, all ye who are weary and carry heavy loading, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. But the key here was Jesus was saying, he was saying, come. And Webster said, come means to move from one place to another. And what Jesus is telling them then, and he even saying to us today, we need to move from the place that we are to the place where he is. Move from where we are to where he is. And so Jesus is telling us to move from where you are to where I am. And, and, and the thing that I like about Jesus, Jesus, he, he brings out where we are. You know, so it, it's, it's no guessing. It's no trying to figure this thing out. Where am I? Jesus let us know where we are. He said, move from your weariness to where I am. And, and when you look at the word weary, it means that, you know, you know you're, just, you're just tired, you know. And, and a lot of times in the body of Christ, we are tired because we're trying to do things that God haven't called us to do. You know, we're trying to fix people or even fix ourselves, and God never called us to be fixers. He the fixer-upper. So we get weary and, and because I'm trying to do something that's not in my DNA. I'm, 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 you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to do all of this, and God is telling me, say, that's not what I called you to do. And then we need to bear in mind that the word of God let us know that it's not by our might, nor by our power, but by my spirit says the Lord God. I mean, education is good, but sometimes we think our education can get us over. A good paying job is good. Sometimes we think our good paying job can get us over. No. No. If it wasn't for the grace of God, 
You got that education because of the grace of God. You got that good job because of the grace of God. It's never about us. It's never about our might. So Jesus is saying, let's move from your place of weariness. Again, trying to do things based on my own ability, my knowledge. Then he also said we need to move from that place of fatigue. Now, fatigue means I'm going beyond weary. Now, when I talk about fatigue, amen, I'm, I'm tired completely in every detail of my life. You know, you get the, I just can't take no more. I'm done. Amen. Put a fork in me. I'm done. Don't bother me. The, 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 I'm, just, I'm just done. And Jesus said, I want to move you from that place of your weariness and your fatigue to a place that I am. Do you realize that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy? So he said, I want to move you from that place of fatigue. He also said, I want to, you're heavy laden. You're heavy burdened, I should say. You're heavy burdened. See, sometimes the Bible tells us in Hebrew, lay aside every weight and sin. That's so easily beset us. And sometimes we get caught up on the sin aspect, but we don't, work, we don't look at the weight aspect. Some of us is in a place, man, that we just weighed down. We're trying to conquer the world. We're trying to do, we're trying to do everything. We're all out of our lane. And see, each and every one of us, there's a plan, there's a purpose that God has for each and every one of us. There's anointing upon each and every one of us in our life. Each and every one of us, you have a purpose here at the river. Sometimes what happened, amen, sometimes I'm trying to do some master job. Or somebody trying to do Bobby job. You're doing a job, but you're not doing a job that God has called you to do. And so we need to find out where is my place. Amen. In God, where is that place that my, that, that my gifting can be utilized? The sister said this morning, for 18 years, I believe she said, her gifting wasn't utilized. And, and, and in the whole time, I, I can just sense and just see God saying, come, I, I got a place for you. Come. I, I feel God was telling Joe, come. I, I, I got a place. I got a place for you. So sometimes you, you see in the commercial when the lady, um, she's serving Verizon and she's trying to go up the hill, pulling the, the, the Verizon, Verizon sign. I mean, she got all that weight. Man, this is a struggle. I can't hardly make it. And the guy from Sprint said, let me uh, release that load. Let me let me help you in this particular situation. That's where we are in Jesus. Amen. We weighed it down. The circumstances of life, again, because sometimes we're trying to fix things, we're trying to solve problems, you know, we're just trying to do all these things. And sometimes we just need just, as Jesus said, come unto me. And yes, sometimes we're in a place where sin is abound. But that's okay. Jesus paid the price for our sin. He said, come unto me. Come on. Yeah, I, I, I know you don't messed up. I mean, I know you didn't dot every I. I know you didn't cross every T. Amen. But 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 come on. Come on to me. Don't stay in that place. Amen. That's the place that the enemy wants you to stay in. Feel sorry for yourself. And can't nobody serve God. I told you this. I, no, Jesus said, come. Even though your right, even though your righteousness was as filthy rags and you was unclean, Jesus said, Come. I will cleanse you up. I will make you whole again. So even in that situation, sometimes we're in a place, amen, where we feel like tradition have us bound. And tradition will have you bound. And when I talk about tradition, I'm not talking about anything according to the word of God. I'm talking about man-made tradition, amen. Sometimes man-made tradition, amen, would just have you bound. Jesus told the first, and you put things on people even you yourself wouldn't touch. And he said the tradition of man have made the word of God to none effect. See, I come, I come in the earth, amen, in the body of Christ, that all of you will be going to hell this morning. The way you dress, you got flip-flops on, you ain't got your hair covered, you ain't got, even I ain't got no tie on. All of us be going to hell, amen. But what that was, amen, was only the tradition of man. Uh -uh. Oh, it's been a while back, amen, amen. It was a while back. 
short pants on and all this kind of stuff. Man, no. Tattoos, oh, come on, come on, come on. You see what I'm trying to say? But all of that, amen, the thing that God told me, God's not concerned whether or not you got short pants, flip-flops on, amen, you got a tattoo. God want to know where's your heart, amen. Do you have a heart towards God, amen? Are you willing to serve me? Are you willing to be a vessel that I can use? So I got past all of that. And I'll tell you the truth, it, may, it freed me up. It's great to come to church, amen, you ain't got to have a tie on. Amen. It feels good, amen. And I know some of you ladies, man, it feels good to have on your flip fly. It feels good to have on, amen, praise God. Amen, it feels good. And I always wonder, amen, why the preacher got to stand and everybody else got to sit. When I look at the Bible, Jesus was sitting. You, you know what I'm saying? No, that's Okay. <laughs> But, but the thing of it is, amen, we, we need to move from that place, amen, of tradition and move to the place to where Jesus is. He said, come on, come on. Some of us, amen, need to move from that place of weariness in search of God. Woo! Because some of us are trying to find God in all the wrong places. We're trying to serve God based on Grandma Mary or Grandpa Lou. Amen. Amen. You got to find God, amen, on, on your own. God want to know you up close and personal. I reminded of David when David came and, and, and Saul want to give David his armor to go fight Goliath. David said, I can't use this. <laughs> you know, David said, the uh, I, I, only thing I know is the sling. David used what he had. So some of us, even uh, trying to find God, amen, we in a place that seems like we stuck. I reminded one time I was talking to this young guy, a lot of things was going on in his life. God's name was Steve, and Steve told me, Steve said, that, uh, Rudy, I'm going to come to God when I get everything straight. I said, Steve, you'll never come. You'll never come because you never get it. You never get it straight. Amen. And so many people have that mentality. Once I, once I get it straight, I can come to God. Not really. It, 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 it sounds noble. <laughs> It might sound good, but you never get it straight. So you'll never come to God. Jesus said, come as you will. Come as you are. And as you come to me, I will do the cleansing. I will do the refreshing. I will, I will bless you. Then he also let us know that some of us just in a place of just being oppressed, being persecuted. You know, on my job, amen, uh, even my neighbor, it just seems like everything, it seems like in my life is just going wrong. Just going haywire. It don't seem like nothing is right. The cat is acting up. The dog is acting up. Amen. The sink is dripping. Amen. Praise God. You know, everything is just going haywire in my life. And Jesus said, I want you to move from that place where you are to where I am. So to get this rest, I got to come from where I am to where he is. And then Jesus goes on into verse number 29. Well, let me say this. Moving, moving from where we are towards Jesus to a place of rest in him. See, Jesus will free us from all of those burdens. Jesus is our emancipation. Jesus will cause us to be free. In Christ, I can be free. Amen. Just like this morning, I told you, free, man. I ain't got, I don't feel calm. I don't feel condemned because I got uh, no tie on. I don't feel condemned, amen, because my hair, my head not covered. I don't feel condemned, amen, because I got flip-flops on. I got shorts on. There's a certain freedom, amen, that I have in Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, Jesus said, in my presence is the fullness of joy. When I move from here, Oh, I might think I know joy, but I don't really know joy. Amen. Amen. Till I move here, I receive a joy that's unspeakable. Amen. Amen. I receive a joy even though a lot of things are still going wrong in my life. There's a certain joy, amen, that I have right here in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because I know that he's with me. He never leaves me. He never forsake me. Oh, I, I think about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fiery, uh, fiery furnace. Christ didn't leave them, but when the king looked in the fiery furnace, he said, I thought we threw in three, but I see four. What happened? Jesus was right there with him. So when I moved from here, trying to deal with all of my issues, all of my problems, all I'm doing is sinking. 
All I'm doing, I'm just thinking. I, it, 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 it's unbearable. But when I get up and I move to over here to where Jesus is, I can find release. Amen. I can find, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The problem may still be there. Amen. But I'm more able now to equip and to deal with the problem. Why? Because I'm in the presence of the Lord. So from moving from where we are toward Jesus to a place of rest in him, Jesus would free us from all of those burdens. The rest that Jesus promised is one of love. Woo, see, over here, I might hear about the love of Jesus. Amen. You know, when you was little in, in kindergarten, you, you learn that song. Jesus loved me, this I know. For oh, the Bible tell me so. It was just a song. I ain't really know the love of God. Amen. But when I move from there to over here to in the presence of his love, it's something that I can rest on. Do you realize I tell people Jesus gave me this love so that I can love him so he can turn right around and bless me. He gave me the love to love him so he can turn right around and bless me with the love that I love him with. So when I'm over here now, there's no question in my mind that Christ loves me. I know I'm loved from him. Tasha Cobb said at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he loves me. Amen. I may didn't die every hour, cross every T, but I'm in the presence of God. I can rest. In his love, amen. I can rest, amen, uh, in, in his healing. Oh, yeah, I know somebody might say, well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm going through something. I don't see the physical manifestation of my healing, but that don't mean that you're not healed. Amen. Amen. I'm going to rest in Christ. Amen. Jesus, I, I, I know that you can heal me, but if by any chance that you don't, I'm still going to serve you. I'm still going to stand here. I'm still going to lift you up. I'm still going to glorify you. Even the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if God don't deliver us, we still ain't going to do what you have us to do, King. So I got to rest, amen, in that promise of his healing, in that promise of his love, and in that promise of his peace, a peace that passes all understanding. Do you realize when you look at people, and I, I remember when I was years ago, and I don't know if I tell you, I remember the, um, Rockefeller, Rich, and well, Howard Hughes, and these guys, man, plenty of money. But yet those guys were miserable. They had money, but they didn't have peace. Amen. And, and, and Jesus said, a peace that the world can't give unto you. See, the world can't understand when I move from here. And, man, my life is in chaos. Everything, Joe, is, is going haywire. Nothing seems like they're going right. And people are looking, but they can't understand that when I move from here to over here, amen, I remember when, when I was at, at work, and, 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 I, and I was going through some things one time at work, man, and some of the workers, they, they knew, but they couldn't understand it. Rudy got a smile on his face, amen. You know, Rudy's still walking the judge, but it was something when I moved from here, amen, to over here. Here, amen, I still was walking, amen, in the midst of the storm, but my goodness, that was a different, amen, because Christ was on my side. Christ was with me. He brought about a peace, amen. When I went to bed at night, I know tomorrow everything going to be all right, amen. David said I was young, and I'm never, I was young, and now I'm old, and I never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed bag and bread. I knew, amen, God was going to provide for me, regardless of what it looked like. I was trying to raise two boys all by myself, trying to work and everything, but I knew God had something in store for me. I just had to hold on, amen, until God, amen, and God brought Dorothy in my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Jesus is talking about the promise, he's talking about one of love, healing, and peace with God, at the, not the end of all labor. That, that don't mean that you're not laboring, per se, but my labor now, Melody, is a little easy. You know, my, my, my labor now is because it ain't all about me, Bob. <laughs> you know, I don't, have to, I don't have to bring the toolbox, amen, bring the ladder, amen, get up on the ladder, hold the shingles up. All, I don't have to do everything by myself, amen. I got some help, but my help comes from the Lord, which maketh the heaven and the earth. So it's not a cease from all the labor. See, a relationship with God changed meaningless worriness toll unto spiritual production and purpose. See, when I was over here and doing my own thing, Joe, all I was really doing was spinning wheel. I was just working, just spinning wheel. I wasn't accomplishing anything. 
just, just spinning wheel. But when I got up and when I came over to him, amen, it was no more spinning wheel. I found out, oh, this is my purpose. Oh, this is my church home. Oh, uh, this is what God called me to do. Oh, this is my gifting. Oh, oh my goodness. I can operate. I can function in this area. Amen. I now become productive. Amen. I now become something that God can use. Amen. And sometimes when you overhear, you kind of look at things and say, uh, 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 uh. I never saw myself being a preacher. I didn't want to be a preacher. When I was in school, I wanted to be an FBI agent. I didn't want to be a preacher. And even when God, I say, God, you don't want me. I mess up the King English. I don't dot every eye. I don't cross every eye. I might say words when I should say words. You don't want me. But God wasn't worried about, the, all God wanted was a willing vessel. All God wanted me to do was say, yes, Lord, I come. God said, I will provide the grace. I will provide the mercy. I will provide the noise. And I'm going to tell you something. I'd rather hear somebody to mess up the King English and have the northern of God then somebody is so fluent. You know that God is awesome. Amen. Amen. And I don't feel nothing. So he took me from a place, amen, that, my God, what is going on to a place now, you know, that I can find, amen, who I, you know, who I am. I think about them days at Philip Morris and, 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 and I was going through some things. At a young age, when you want to talk about material stuff, I accomplished a lot at a young age, amen. But man, I was still miserable, amen, still going through some things. And somebody came to me and said, I, 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 let me talk to you about God. I don't want to hear nothing about God. I just want to hear somebody to help me solve my problem. Didn't realize it was God, amen, who was the problem solved. Didn't realize at that time God was saying it to me, come, Rudy, come, you heavy burden, come, Rudy, you got a lot going on. But I was fighting it every step of the way. And sometimes we do that, amen. But oh my God, I thank God that, that morning, amen, at work, I don't know why I was going up the back, the back steps, I don't know why, but going up the back steps to my station, I just dropped to my knees, threw up my hand, and I, what I was saying, God, I come. God, I surrender. God, I give up. God, it's all in your hands now. And when I got up, the situation didn't change, but oh, did I have a peace of mind. Oh, did I find the blessings of God. Amen. But I also want to look at verse number 29. So in verse number 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are labored and, and, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then in verse number 29, he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And I found out a yoke was a heavy, was a wooden bar that they placed upon two animals so that those two animals could work together. You couldn't have right-hand animal trying to go right, uh, 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 right and left-hand animal trying to go left. They're not working together. He wanted, he, he wanted us, amen, what Jesus was saying, let us yoke together. Let us work together, amen. And, and I reminded her, I saw when y'all was talking about um, um, the movie Shaka. You remember when the guy was trying to walk the water without Jesus? And Jesus said, you can't do that on your own. He said, if you could do that with me. So the thing of it is, Jesus wants to yoke with us. He wants us to, so that we can work more efficiently, amen, towards God. So God wants to work with us, and he is saying, let us team up so that we can do the will of God. Jesus is the one doing the work anyway. So even when I yoke into him, it, it, he's out in front, you know, and all I'm doing, which way we going, God? Left. Which way we going, God? Right. But see, even sometimes, even with that, we still try to do our own thing. Somehow we got this thing that we know more than God. We don't know more than God. And so we just got to get to the point that I'm going to team up with him. I'm going to allow Jesus to lead me and to guide me. And sometimes, Melody, it could be so easy. I mean, you get up, man, well, I want to, I want to, I want to go to Kroger. And God said, no, I, I want you to go over there and hear the food line. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but I want to go over to Kroger. I, 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 want a, I want a loaf of bread. But no, if you go over here to the food line, you can get three loaves for the price. You can pay for one loaf maybe. You know what I'm trying to say? So sometimes he just want to team up with us, and, and we allow him to lead us, allow him to guide us, and it will make life simple for each and every one of us. 
Because the, the whole thing, it, 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 it's his marvel. I mean, he know my uprising, my down setting. He know my thoughts are far off. So all I need to do is just come to the place that I rest in him. Now, verse number 29 in the Amplified Version say, Take my yoke upon you and lean on me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and, and, and blessed and blessed quietness for your soul. Oh, my goodness. So when I just move from here to over here, my, my goodness, I can just find all this peace. I can find all this. I can find all this recreation. Because, see, where I came from over here in the church, you couldn't do nothing. <laughs> and you almost like say, well, who want to serve God? I can't do nothing. You know, I'm at church every night of the week. Amen. I, I, I can't do anything. But when I got over here, I found, I said, oh, my goodness, I can't go to the ball game. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I can't go to the fair. Amen. Maybe there's somebody I can witness to at the ball game. Somebody I can witness to at the fair. Maybe I can be a light. Oh, I don't just have to go to Christian school. I can go to public school. Maybe somebody in the public school system need a light, need a word from God. Oh, my goodness. Do you mean I got, I, got all of, I got all of this and God helps me out? Oh, on Sunday, all I got to do now is just record the football game. Oh, my goodness. This is easy. I, I, I like this. So he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And then he said, for my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, oppressive, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light. Am I easy to be bored? Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm over here, man, and, and, and I got all this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so burdened down, Joe. Oh, my goodness, I got all this. But when I come, Jesus will say, give it to me. I got it. Peter, he said, cast all your care, all, all, all your care unto me. Paul said, be not anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, give it all unto him. Oh, my goodness, I can come to him, and now he take the pressure off of me. Oh, my goodness, I'm free. Amen. And that's a good feeling. And I see where he talks about the word come again. And I see that in Matthew, the 14th chapter. In Matthew, the 14th chapter, when he, and this is um, Pastor Mike made mention of this in Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Um, the disciples was in serious trouble. You know, Jesus told them, say, get in the boat, going over to the uh, other side. I'm going to be there. Uh, I got some things I want to finish up um, over here. And so when they was in the boat about three o'clock in the morning, there came a storm, bad storm. Amen. Maybe worse than what a Harvey was, but it was a, a bad storm. And man, they were trying to fight this storm. They were trying to deal with this storm and fear set in, man. They didn't know what they was going to do. Then they saw somebody walk in the water. They said, ah, it must be a ghost. It must be a ghost. Amen. They realized that Jesus said, peace. Amen. Oh, I love it when Jesus comes sometimes. Jesus said, peace. And a lot of times when Jesus say peace, you getting ready to know, say, hey, man, so I'm getting ready to come down the pipe. Amen. Amen. He, he preparing me before we come down the pipe. Amen. When he say peace. And so what happened was um, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and they in their fear. They cried out. Um, and they cried out. It's a goat. But Peter was not. So Peter was in the boat. But when Peter looked out, Peter wasn't trying to put Jesus to the test. Well, what happened was Jesus was in a sense. Peter was in a sense operating in faith. Now, that's that's the second key. If you want to come to this rest and this peace in God, you got to first come to him. But then you got to come to him in faith. You got to believe it, man. That when I leave here, go over here, there's going to be. A change. I reminded of the bagger. He was sitting there, and, and, and in that day and time, a bagger had on certain clothes that they wore to, to, to pinpoint that they were a bagger. But when he knew that Jesus was coming, he began to cry out unto Jesus, and the people would tell him, say, man, just 
Be quiet. The Lord ain't got time to deal with you right now. Be quiet. Be quiet. Amen. And that's sometimes when we deal with the tradition. Amen. A man. Sometimes we think the church is just within four walls. Amen. This whole Chesterfield community belongs to the river of love. Amen. Amen. The whole city of Richmond, per se, belongs to the river of love. Amen. It's not just the four walls here. It's bigger than the four walls here. And so uh, they say, Quiet down, man. Jesus ain't got time for you, but he cried out just the more. Amen. And Jesus said, go tell him to come to me. And when he came back to the bag and said, hey, man, Jesus said, come. When he got up, you know what he did? He didn't just get up. He took off the bag of clothes. What? Because he was moving from this place. I'm coming to Jesus. Amen. And I know, amen, in faith, everything going to be all right. I know when I come from here to over here. Bagging days are over. Amen. Amen. I, I, I hear the word of God. Amen. No good thing would I hear from you. I hear the word of God. You're blessing your comings. You're blessing your going. So when I move from here to over here, amen, things are getting ready to take place. Amen. So Jesus, so Peter, amen, in the boat, amen, and Peter said, Jesus, is that you, is that you bid me to come? Is that you? Bid me to come. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, come. And, and here's the main thing. Even when Jesus was coming to them in the midst of the storms of their lives, isn't it so great, Connie, in the midst of my storms, amen, Jesus is right there. He coming towards me, amen. He coming towards me with stretched out hand. He coming towards me, say, come, I got the answer. Come, I can fix it, amen. Come, I can deal with this. Come, just give it to me. Come, lay it at my feet. So Jesus was coming. So Peter said, bid me to come. And Jesus said, and, and Jesus told Peter, he said, come. Peter got out that side of that boat, and Peter began to walk on water. Amen. But here's the thing. Because, amen, by faith and coming to Christ, he experienced a unique demonstration of the power of God. By moving from here, because when he was in that boat, he said, bid me to come. He said, I don't want to stay in this unsafe place. I don't want to stay in this troubled place. Amen. I, I, I want to come to where you are. And when Jesus said, come. He, he experienced the unique power of, of God. And for some of us, we hear, man, God want to demonstrate his unique power in the lives of each and every one of us. You, sister, there are some things that God want to do in you Woo to his glory and to his praise. Amen. But God had to get you from over here. Amen. Amen. To I get to the place that I'm over here. And then you even did something else today. You made a confession. This is my house of God. This is the place. I mean, so what you did, you came from, you still was still moving all the time. You were gravitating to Christ. And boy, when you did that, whoo, I feel like the best is yet to come. God is getting ready to unload some things in your life. Amen. You're going to be a blessing to the river. Amen. God is going to use you in an awesome way. And when Joe stood up there and said, and when I came here, amen, I felt the presence of God. Joe was moving, amen, moved from West Virginia to Virginia, but God was still dealing with him. And when he said, I found something, this is a place, amen, that I can, I, I can hang my head. This is a place, amen, that I can serve God. What was he doing? He was moving from one place to another. And now God is saying, I'm free, boy. I'm going I'm, I'm to open up some things in Joe's life, Mike. It's going to be awesome, amen. So when we move from here to hear, I put my in a place, amen, that I can demonstrate and, and, and see the unique power and the glory of God. And that's what God wants to do in our life. I can't do it on my own. Amen. See, God take ordinary people and cause them to do extraordinary things. Amen. So God wants to take us from here, amen, to over here, amen, so that God can bless us and that God can move in an awesome and in a mighty way. So Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water going to see Jesus. But doing so, he experienced a unique demonstration of God's power. And so, like I said, he had to operate in faith. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and 6, he that cometh, he that cometh. But I got, I got to come. I got to come to God. He that cometh to God, amen, amen, know that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seeks him. So what? Still, I got to move from where I am to the place of 
God, amen, to be able to receive everything that God have for me to have for me to have. And so when Peter did that, um, Peter started to sing, but because, because he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the highways around him, his faith wavered when he realized what he was doing. We may not walk on water, but we may walk through tough situations in life. If we focus on the ways of difficult situations without faith, without faith in Jesus to help us, we may be dispersed. Dis, you know, we might just be despaired and we just might say, oh, my goodness, I want to give up. I want to quit. But the thing of it is, we just got to get to the place to move from this place, from that place. So this morning, River, I want to encourage each and every one of you. Amen. I'm fine. Thank you. I just want to encourage each and every one of you to move from the place where you are. You, be, you know better than anybody where you are. You know where you are in Christ better than any pastor preacher can ever do. You know, you know where you are. Amen. And you have to be honest with your Self, amen. Say, God, am I in the place? I like to say, ask God the tough questions, Mike. God, am I in the place that you have me to be? Do I need to move? Is there something that I need to do? Amen. You know, and begin to talk to God, and whatever God tells you to do, trust Him, amen, that as you move towards Him, here's the thing as you're moving towards, the closer you get to Him, the closer He's getting to you. So this morning, I want to say unto the river, it was a song, and it say, Jesus, I come. And the song say, oh, how I need your grace. More than my words can say, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. My place over here, I need his grace. I can't even, I can't even come up with the words, amen, to, to let him know that I need him. But Jesus, here I come. Jesus, I come. And all my weaknesses. You are my confidence. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. That ought to be your cry to the morning. Jesus, I'm coming. I'm drawing nigh unto you. I will rise and stand redeemed. Heaven's open over me. To your name eternally, endless glory will I bring. Oh, what amazing love beneath your cleaning floor. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Oh, my goodness. Here, I'm just hearing about his love. Here, I might just witnessing his love with somebody else. But when I come over here, I'm getting a friend. I don't see. I tell people this all the time. He's God to everybody. But he's not father to everybody. I don't just want to know him, Pastor Mike, as God. I want to know him as father. I want to have dad, daddy. I want to have that intimate relationship with him. I want to be able to sit by his side, amen, and tell him all my problems. You know, daddy, it's been a rough day, daddy. Amen. But daddy, I know, daddy, you know, you, 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 you got it. You know, you know, I want to be, I, I, I want that type of relationship I, w with him, amen. Oh, what amazing love beneath your cleansing floor. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. In every broken place. Woo! I'm over here in every broken place in my life, amen. And there's a whole lot of broken places in my life. Sometimes we try to put up a front. I don't want nobody to know that I'm hurt. I don't want nobody to know my struggle. And even in the church, we tell a lot, how you doing, Ruth? Everything is all right. God is a good God. Everything is not all right, amen. Sometimes we got to be and say, I'm hurting. In every broken place, you are my righteousness. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Thank you, Jesus. Just as I am. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! Broken. Amen. Undone. Righteousness as filthy rags. Amen. Society don't want to have anything to do with me. Amen. But Jesus, here am I. I'm coming. I'm coming. Thank you, Jesus. Just as I am, I come. Hallelujah. Oh, what amazing love. When I come from here to there, amen, the river, amen, of love, amen, I've been praying for you, God. I know, I know, so individually and collectively, there may have been some challenge, but what God is just one of the people to stand up and say, here am I, God. Here am I, God. I come, amen, I come, amen, and I'm coming towards you. My mind made up. There's no turning back. 
I'm serving God. Amen. I'm going to lift your name up. I'm going to glorify you. Even if somebody got to come and help me lift up your, hold my hands up. Amen. But I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the honor. So this morning, and I, and I just want you, if, if you just stand, amen, just, just, just stand. And if you believe that this morning will say, Jesus, I come, I just want you to get out your seat and, and just get out your seat, walk around, amen, then go back to your seat. But what you demonstrate, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. And I believe that as you get out your seat and walk around, something's going to hit you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Something's going to take place in your life. Amen. You might get home tonight about 12 o'clock and some minister might say, Woo! 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 Something's going to hit me. Something's going to hit me here. Amen. Amen. And she can go back and say, Oh, oh. I remember when Pastor Rudy said, Come. So just get out of your seat. And, 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 and just get out of your seat and, and then go back to your seat. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Pray. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. How you coming around, my sister? through the door, amen, you're coming in with a different approach, amen, you're coming in now, amen, you're with a different uh, viewpoint, amen, not a viewpoint of seeing the situation, because see, when Peter looked at the waves, amen, the, the storm, he began to sink, but I'm not looking at the circumstances of the situation, my eyes is on God, amen, I'm looking towards God, amen, even if it's something, amen, Pastor Mike, to drive me to my knees, even to my knees, I still can look to the hills from which comes my help, my focus is on God, I'm putting blinders on, amen, I don't hear enough. All I want to do is see Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus, I'm coming to you. I'm not going to allow any circumstances, any situation to hinder me or to stop. I'm coming to you to receive all that you have for me. And for so many of us, man, we haven't even touched the, 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 the tip of the iceberg, what God has for us. Amen. He has so much for us. Amen. We the head and not the tail. We above and not beneath. Amen. We're an awesome, mighty people of God. Amen. And God is saying, as you come, if you give yourself unto me, lay aside all that other contraption. Or lay aside all the other confusion and everything and just come to me. I'm telling you, church, we living in the hour that our nation needs the body of Christ to stand up. We need the body of Christ to stand up and say, God, hear me. God, hear me. God, we're willing to make a difference. God, we are praying. God, we're lifting up your name. He's looking for us. The problem with the world is the cut is before the horse. Amen. We need to write that thing. Amen. We the head and not the tail. I pray God blessing upon each and every one of you. Jesus, I come. 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 Hallelujah.